Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you. And I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Yo, before we get into the meat and potatoes, I got to let you know that this video was brought to you by Manscaped. Big Manscaped in the building providing lawnmower 3.0s, body sprays, deodorants, 4.0s, lip balm, ball spray, ball cream, everything. Tap in, use code Brunson, save 20% off, get the free shipping. And the free shipping I fought for that for y'all. Listen, listen. This Honey Badger talk got me excited. It got me excited because this is a guy that I really, really wanted. I understand that it's just talk, but you also got to understand that anything can happen. You got to be also be careful about the news you spreading around today. Because you got, listen, I don't do April Fool's jokes. I don't play around. I don't play around. A lot of people playing around sending me some crap, and I, be I believed one of them. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of tight about that. But, you know, listen, the Cowboys are in the running for it, too. I think that the Honey Badger is a better fit for us, and I think that he would get more out of the defense with us based upon the established veterans that we have. Fletcher Cox is an established veteran. So is Brandon Graham. The, the, it's, it's, level, it's levels to intensity. You know what I'm saying? Once players start buying into a system and matching the best guy's intensity, then I think, you know, you can have something special. Like, when you look at us on paper with the Philadelphia Eagles defense, look at it on paper, the one that won the Super Bowl. Not Nothing really scary. But what was there? An intense leader on the back end, Malcolm Jenkins, who just retired. Amazing career, by the way. Two-time Super Bowl champ, three-time Pro Bowler. That was on the back end. If you get the Honey Badger on the back end of Fletcher Cox, Reddick, Darius Slay. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with this now? Brandon Graham. You see where I'm going with this? If you get that guy on the back end, you really can create something special. So I hope the Philadelphia Eagles can make it happen. I hope they pull the trigger on it. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, man. Jalen Hurts out here still putting in work. Listen, this is what you're going to get when you're dealing with Jalen Hurts. While Jalen Hurts is the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles, you're going to you expect to see work being put in. Just expect to see work being put in. I'm not, I'm not new to this. Some of y'all new to this. Some of y'all new to believing in it. But I'm going to read to y'all, you know, with, uh, with a performance trainer, Chris Flores said about him. So Jalen Hurts is out in Southern California, I believe. Where is he at? Uh, J Jalen Hurts is Orange County. He's in Orange County. He threw the receivers Preston Wilson, Preston Williams, I'm sorry, DeAnthony Thomas, and Josh Malone. The performance trainer, Chris Flores, said Hurts is a problem, a real one. We're working on the detail, spacing, timing, and uh, what's that last word? Concepts. They work on everything. That's mental. He has the physical attributes. Once he get the space and time and the concepts down, he will start to round out and to be a more complete passer and will start to be able to control the game in that area at a proficient level as well. You got to be patient. Like, y'all running around here, y'all running around here giving virtual neck to Malik Willis, but Malik Willis got all the physical attributes, but that part ain't developed either yet. So what is it that you want? All of these guys got to do this. Get the, the All of these guys got to do that. They got to turn that curve as far as the mental part. You know what I'm saying? Once you get to a certain level in football, 80% of it is mental. We know you can run, jump, squat, tackle, hit. We know you can do all of that stuff. Catch. We know, but can you read? Can you read? Did you hear what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were saying about him in our playoff game? When they had our number, they said he can't read. They didn't say he can't throw. They didn't say he can't, he can't read. Pay attention. That's his biggest problem right now. You know what I'm saying? And this prompted me to do, you know, this prompted me to do a draft. An April mock draft, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to let y'all see what I came up with. It's actually really dope. I really like this draft. Um, but then it, it made me come to the realization while I was doing the draft that Jalen Rager's job might be in jeopardy after the draft. And also I've seen it on Bleacher Report that they even put something up there. And he he's one of the guys whose job is in jeopardy. You know what I'm saying? His job is literally in jeopardy. He can literally be replaced. And he probably should be replaced because he's averaging 17 points a game via the article from Bleach Report. 17 points a game. That's best dog. It's due to average 17 yards of reception. Let that sink in. It's guys who average 17 yards a catch. His whole game check. His whole game check as a first round pick. Per game, what he makes is guys who do that in one catch, man. You got to cut bait. The longer you drag this process out, the longer we have a deficiency in the wide receiver area. You got to cut bait, man. Dude is buns. But let's get to the draft, though, man. So right off the brick, 
right off brick. The 15th, the 15th pick in this draft, what I did was I traded the draft. I got that, I got that pick out of here. You know what I'm saying? I got that pick out of here simply because I know that we'll be able to be okay. And look what I got back for the pick. I got back something crazy. I traded the 15 to the Arizona Cardinals. They're not in our division, so who cares? They gave me back the 23rd and the 55th. So not only did I get there, not only did I just swap first round picks with them, I got their second round pick. You see what I'm saying? So now what I did was move one pick, and now we got three first round picks and two second round picks. That's five picks within the top 100. You know what I'm saying? Five picks in the top 100. Not to mention you already slotted for the 83rd pick. So that's six picks in the top 100. Howie Roseman got so many options. But with the 16th pick, I draft Devin Lloyd. They gave me an A grade for that. It's a, it's a guy of need. It makes sense. I know you want to talk about Hassan Reddick being there, but I'm here to tell you this right now. Hassan Reddick is better at chasing the quarterback. We need somebody that can, you know, cover that back end and cover as well. And can hit and can stop run and stop the run. And be, if we need somebody to be a force on the other side too, not saying Hassan Reddick can't, but Hassan Reddick has his superpower. You know what I mean? Devontae Wyatt, I got a B plus for that. We don't need a defensive inside guy, but we know that Devontae Wyatt can be moved outside. He's a dog. You don't even got to mention him. You could use that. Um, then it shows the trade details. Ah, we get out of there. 19th, uh, I'm sorry, 23rd pick, Chris Olove. I got an A minus for that. First round talent, first round pick. You drafted him 19. Was, was you drafted him a 23? I'm so, I'm um, excuse me. He, he's up, he's around it. Listen, he's a guy, he, he, he's that guy. Chris Olove's route running mixed with speed. It don't even make no sense, man. It's a no brainer. Then you go to my 51st pick, Nick Bonato or Nick Benito. I hate having to butcher this guy's name, but this dude could play. This dude gets to the pass rusher almost at it's, it's almost relentless. You know what I'm saying? He don't sat, he don't, he don't, he don't get the sack all the time. But the pressure that he creates, having to make a quarterback move his feet and hold the ball just a little bit longer, that's valuable. A la Brandon Graham. Brandon Graham ain't blowing us out the water with the sack total, but he makes it uncomfortable for quarterbacks. I like that pick right there. I decided to double dip. Listen, I don't ever want to be in a position again that we just came out of. You know what I mean? We just was second to last in sacks. That ain't Eagles football. So I went and got another edge rusher, Jake Jackson. I got an A pick for that too. So right now, the, the, right now, the algorithm is agreeing with how I'm moving. They, they agree. They, they agree. 83rd pick, Marcus Jones. I got a B plus for that cornerback. Don't know much about him, but I needed a cornerback right there. I felt like you got to do something right there if you're not going to make nothing happen early at the cornerback position. The, the no, number 124, Jelani Woods. Very, very intriguing prospect. I got a C plus for it, but I just don't know where Jackson is going to fit in. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah uh, the, the guy we got, Ty Ty Tyron Jackson, I think he hurt himself the last uh, game of the season. I don't know where he's going to fit in. This guy, though, Jelani Woods, I mean, 6'7", 265 pounds. You can use a tight end that big. Because if you decide to go heavy or max protect, he the guy that could be in there blocking instead of having Dallas Goddard out there, even though Dallas Goddard could hold his own. But why waste him getting banged up? You need him out there doing other stuff. But this guy, this guy can run at 6'7", 265. I'm cool with it. He could be a lead blocker. It's so much you could six seven two sixty five. I'm I, I, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good grabbing him right there. I'm good. One twenty four. Then you get um Zonovan Knight halfback at one fifty four. Um, they gave me a C for that. That's my lowest rate of the draft, but I think it was a great value pick right there. Absolutely great value pick. Uh, then at 162, I'm sorry, I get a safety. Great value pick. I got an A right there. Sterling Ward, Sterling Weatherford from uh, Miami. You know what I mean? I ain't mad at that. Not the Hurricanes, but Miami. Uh, I don't know what school that is, but hey, at this point in the draft, you can do stuff like that. Then at 166, I go get me a tackle. Uh, Chris Paul from Texas. Yeah, I got an A for that too. Then at 194, I went and grabbed me a center. Luke Luke Wattenberg. I got a B for that. I got You got to get a center because Kelsey's on a one-year deal, so I'm not mad at that. Just like the Devontae Wyatt pick is a no-brainer because Fletcher Cox is on a one-year deal. Very unlikely that those guys come back. At overall grade, this is one of my highest graded, uh, my highest graded drafts. Uh, damn, I don't even show the overall, but I think my overall is like a B plus or an A for this draft. I mean, you can't complain with something like this if you're walking away at the end of the day like that. We got to start thinking draft, guys. We got to start thinking long term. We got to start thinking what contracts are expiring. This is gonna let us know who is. You, this is going to let us know how this team is going to proceed in this draft and why they haven't wasted any picks because they need them. Let me know what you think in the comments, man.